What's up, everyone? I'm in Prescott, Arizona for the Arizona School Personnel Association Conference, and it's snowing. Can't believe it. This is Anthony Kim. He's a Corwin Press bestselling author with publications including The New Team Habits, The New School Rules, and The Personalized Learning Playbook. But the behind the scenes of how discussions and relationships and trust is built between organizations is something that's been kind of on the forefront of my mind. And so what we found in our work is that a lot of people actually don't know anything about the people that they work with, they just take it for granted. How would you describe your organization, whether it's your team or your district, the identity of your organization? When I think about identity, the things that we do every day actually create our identity. What is an organization? And to me, an organization is actually a collection of people that have a set of agreed upon rules. And so you could imagine how hard it is to make these changes when you're trying to overwrite long-term memory of an organization. That's, how, that's what we're actually trying to do. What's called the New School Rules, and we talked about six chapters, six levers that needed to change. How we plan, how we build teams, how we manage roles, how we make decisions, how we share information, and how the organization learns. The things that you do every day have a ripple effect in your organization. So the three habits that we talk about are these kind of things that we think fill your calendar every day, which is how do you learn, how do you meet, and how do you run projects? How do you learn is like uh, sharing mistakes. If we want to model vulnerability, we have to share mistakes. And the way we learn is often by making mistakes. How we meet, we talk about creating inclusive environments, but we don't let everybody talk. And it turns out people, even when we try to let everybody talk, they don't talk because they don't have the habit of doing it. So how do you create that habit? And then projects, when we talk about projects, how many of you go to the same people over and over again to kick off a project? And it's like, we get kind of similar results as a result of that. And that's because we don't actually bring diverse ideas into a project team when we kick them off. The methodology that we came up with is called the CPAD method. And what we found in behavioral science research is that there's a cycle that has to, people have to go through in order for a habit or a behavior to change. And we came up with this one, which is a spark has to inspire somebody. When I give you an idea, whether Teresa is like, hey, I got this way to automate something, hopefully you got a spark from that, and you're like, I want that kind of convenience, right? And so once you get the spark, then you're gonna go expand, which is research all of the possible ways to think about this work, talk to other people, and then, then you have to practice, and which is like, okay, now that I kind of know this, I have to be in a safe place where I could try some of this stuff out. And then once I do that, I'm going to apply it, and it's like, how do I make these things that I'm trying part of who, how I do business every day? And then as I do that, is I, I start debriefing, which is like, are these the results that I anticipated from doing this, putting the effort in? And so it goes in a cycle, and we think that this cycle takes about six weeks. It's a four-team group. So we had Nick, um, who's our program architect. We had a senior programmer. We had um, someone from finance who was in control of the visions programs, so that if we had to make a change into visions, they kind of knew what was going on and also, of course, provided feedback um, from the finance department. And it was myself for HR. We came up with kind of the projects, the timelines, what we thought needed to happen, who was part of it, but we were really the main four in that core group. We schedule a weekly meeting and we stay true to that meeting. So every Tuesday at 9 a.m., we all have to meet, regardless if there's something on the plate or not, just to do a check-in. One of the folks that I partnered with and are here at the table is Ed Elements. They wrote a book called The New Team Habits. And I don't do, this is not, they're not paying me. This is not a promotional thing. I'm working with Kim and his team because this is the book and they have a table out there. This book here is a guide. That's what we need. We need, we need tools. We need a guidebook, and they're focused on how to make better teams. Because this is not an individual effort. If collaboration is one of the most important skills, 
What are the tools that you're using to build that collaboration? It's a culture shift. It's a little bit at a time. It's Monday and then Tuesday and Wednesday. What are the tools that you're using? What are the skills that you're using? And I'm excited by this kind of work and other work like this because this gives us, it's one thing to say we need to do this. It's another thing to hand people tools to go do this. She's going to, in 20 years, she's going to be 25 years old. She's going to be a teacher, I can tell already. She's going to be an educator. She's going to have little kids with her. And she's going to be shopping in a thrift store. They're going to be doing some kind of scavenger hunting thing. And she's going to find this in the back of the store in a 50 cent box. <laughs> she's going to pick it up. She's going to look at it. Because you remember things from when you were five years old. And she's going to look at it. And she's going to say, ah, you guys, my asshole dad had one of these. <laughs> And she blushes every time we talk about this story. But anyway, so she's going to say, my dad had one of these. She's going to want to put it on her shelf like a museum piece. The way some of you have old technology sitting on your shelf like museum pieces. I actually, the new Motorola Razor phone came out. And so I went into my old boxes looking for my old ancient Razor phone. That's literally like 10 years old. It's not even that old. She's going to want to put this on her shelf like a museum piece. And then she's going to look at it. She's going to say to these young kids, she's going to, she's going to say to these young kids, look, look, you guys, there's the port. And those kids are going to be like, what's that for? And she's going to say, okay, I swear, you're not going to believe me, but this is true. My dad had to plug this into the wall. <laughs> and those kids are going to look at her like a little bit confused and be like, what, what do you mean? Like take it out of the box and activate the nuclear cell? No. He had to plug this into the wall every day for hours. This thing was plugged into the wall. I'd see him at airports walking around like this, going like, looking for a place to plug this thing in, cursing his head off. It was terrible. And those little kids are going to look at her, confused, and have a little bit of disgust in their face. And they're going to say, My God, how did those? Poor people live like that. 